Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, like a book club for people who hate reading. This week was Ryan's Picks, where he picked The Rocker with Rain Wilson. And we're doing Season 1, Episode 1 of the 1967 version of Dragnet. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston. Here's the description of The Rocker. The Rocker tells the story of a failed drummer who was given a second chance at fame. So since John decided to boycott this film, I, 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 uh, I'm gonna my life in. was insane this weekend, uh, so whatever. That, oh, guess, damn it, but reason I picked it. I know it was, but I still watched it, <laughs> just so at least two of us know what's going on. Um, I gotta say, Rain <laughs> Wilson is the fattest drummer I've ever seen. Um, I mean, Are we talked about body type must, or head? Just everything. I mean, he must not put that much effort into it, or he'd actually lose weight. I mean, it was a nice little touch that he was sweating like a fat Irish man with all the hair. But that's any drummer. Um, Look at all, Lars Ulrich. Yeah. After a couple of sets, the dude looks like he needs a, you know, <laughs> just to come yeah, back. But, I mean, like, Rain Wilson, like, he's just, just jiggled with every hit. But, I mean, I got to say, though, he did pretty well on hitting the right drum and cymbals with the, you know, the kind of synchroning of the false drum playing. So it wasn't did. actually him playing, you don't think? No, no. There was a couple <laughs> times he hit the wrong one, and I'm like, that was a tom, that wasn't a snare. Stop it. Stop it. God damn it. <laughs> Fat bastard, learn what you're hitting. Um, so it's like Danny, Bacci, Danny Bonaducci strumming a bass. Yeah, but I, I but I do got to say. Well, you know, it's it's much much easier to fake that than it is to fake drums. You don't you don't if you true. know how to play a bass, you'll notice somebody messing it up. You don't yeah. have to know how to play the drums to be like, wait a second, that wasn't right. Yeah, um, I got to say though, um, when he after he had lost to the wannabe ACDC band, he wasn't part of them anymore, and he went with the the One Direction band. Um, I was actually impressed because it was like when he started playing, it was like every sound man in the world probably <laughs> related to that on chill the fuck out <laughs> on to what? every fucking drummer I've ever met. Ryan, you're not the exception. You mean they're, they're hitting too hard? Uh, yeah. They're just playing way too loud and way too crazy when they first start. It's just, it yeah, just that happens. was, that was always my problem. That, that's exactly what happens. Um, I'm not surprised by that actually. Now, Ryan, since John didn't watch this, did you find it weird seeing Christina Applegate playing a mom? I just... You know what? Uh, <laughs> she no, grew on me. Because <laughs> she, totally, she totally sold me on the role. It, it took later. a minute because, yeah, I'm definitely not used to her as, as that type, but I loved her as that, as that character. But yeah, that she sure grew on you after a while. But that's your own age bias. Though. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, there was there was a couple of moments in this because I was really not expecting to like this movie when I first saw it. I was expecting to, because especially as a drummer, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to hate this fucking thing. Because um, I'm not, I, you know, at the time I was kind of a, take it or leave it sort of rain Wilson, uh, uh, person don't hate him. Didn't necessarily love everything that he does. Um, I definitely like the office, but you know, his character is, is, uh, is a, is a real False. interesting one. But, uh, there was a couple of moments. The first one, when he's chasing him down in the van. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it, I was like, Oh, this is funny. This is <laughs> already funny. Ryan gets up oh, and is, yeah. goes outside just to, um he goes outside just to unplug the drum machine. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was actually pretty fun. Um I was like as soon as I saw that I'm like, "Oh, I respect this movie now." And so, then it was just enjoyment. It, so it, James, I was actually really surprised. So James, what's your initial rating? That's a three and a half. Ryan? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, if I want to compare it to anything, the closest thing you can come to is Jack Black in School of Rock. And this one's way better bit, than that. Right. So I, way better than that. I have a question, Ryan. You've seen that movie, That Thing You Do, right? Of course. What do you? How do you compare the drumming to that, to this one? Because hmm. cause School of Rock is, is one, but, you know, it, the drummer is not really the main part of the story yeah. versus That Thing You Do. He is, like, pretty much the main character, besides Liv, uh, Liv like. Tyler. <laughs> So I don't understand the question. How do I compare the styles or, or yeah, just like how they the play portrayal it. of the drummers in the movie? Yeah, yeah like how true. they matched playing, you know, stuff like that. Uh, well, um, what's his name? Uh, um, I can't think of his he played ga- bloody uh, the, name. The drummer oh my played gosh. Guy in the movie. I don't know his real name. Uh, well, yeah, I know. I remember his character name. I don't remember his real name, which is sad because he's a really good actor. Um, 
it'll come to me in a minute. Anyway, he was playing the drums. Yeah. So, you know, that was it's obviously bonus points right there. Um, you know, it's it, the, the fact that this type of movie would even take the time to try to match up what's going on is is impressive because I think they realize like, okay, for this to be a viable visual, we have to pay attention to this because we're going to be focusing on the drummer quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say, I mean, there was only like maybe two times at best that I could recognize that he was off and it wasn't enough to really take you out of the moment. So why would they focus? Why do you think they would do so well to try to match you? Cause this is a comedy. I mean, granted it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't say slapstick, but on a comedy, because you don't it necessarily... will, it will throw you off though. That's what I was saying. Cause it's so yeah. visual. Like you can play the wrong notes on a bass and no one's going to notice. Yeah. Like, Emma but Stone, if you, if your hand is a symbol, if your hand hits a symbol and there's no symbol sound there, everyone knows what a symbol sounds like. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It'll definitely probably you know, take it's, you. It's not like they're looking. They're not looking at it like, wait, that wasn't a a a a, a C sharp. <laughs> the uh, only time I've ever noticed a bass or guitar going wrong, a bass specifically, is you watch somebody strum it. You don't strum a bass. Well, I think uh, the big moment of why they put so much effort into trying to sync it up as well is because the big reveal at the end of the movie was that the band that he was previously with were doing lip syncing the entire way. So I think that's the only thing I could think of is because they were trying to make that seem like such a big deal, which it kind of is, but... Now, only if you yeah. get Mark Wahlberg and this guy together, you could have that, like, Mark Wahlberg wannabe 80s metal <laughs> movie and this movie combined. Wasn't it The Rocker too? I don't that, remember. Wasn't that the name of the one that Marky Mark did, Ryan? No, I don't think that was the... the uh, which one? The one it, where he was playing the um, he was 80s the, hair band guy? Yeah, he had long hair. Oh, uh, Rockstar. Rockstar, <laughs> That's it. okay. I know it was rock or <laughs> Rockstar or something like that. Um you know, there were a few nice touches in this as a sound man for, I did that for almost like 20 years. Um, there was a few nice touches in the whole thing. Like, uh, I was kind of a little bit annoyed that he did the testies, 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 test, mic check thing. Uh, every sound man's heard that at least 30 times. Yes, but this is a comedy, so obviously it, it, you got to do yeah. that. So that was kind of a nice little throw yeah. in. And, um, a horrible sound man at their first actually g hired gig that dude need to be fired since all the feedback when they started that was just ridiculous that sound man's a piece of shit but they did that on purpose uh, i think they did because it kind of gave a little bit of his knowledge of like oh this just happens we just gotta get it back together yeah you know, type thing so that was kind of cute but but i mean yeah. you should expect i i don't know that that would have been expected to me especially if you're playing in one of these small places very rarely do you see a, uh, like a dive bar have any quality of sound man i've seen a couple but not a lot from my experience yeah well okay so 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 james back, back me up on this one <laughs> go ahead uh back me up on this one man cuz cuz since uh since Charlie didn't watch this shit um <laughs> This was definitely not his weird, creepy character that he usually plays. No, this wasn't. Uh, well, there was a, a couple moments where it was. Um, well, he, he's he's obnoxious in a couple of moments, but but for no, this particular character's comedy. type of, no, it's not. And you know, like he, like I said, he's obnoxious a couple of moments, but not. It, it, it all plays with this particular character, and this character is actually played pretty good as just this old rocker who is like, well, I'm a great drummer, but these guys didn't recognize it. And he's got this big giant ship on his shoulder. So how close was uh, his character in the style of acting? Was it to super? Was it the same style? No, because super, in, uh, I didn't find super. No, not even, not even, of, not even close. And super, he played a shy, people, awkward person. See, I, but I didn't see super. People, is awkward comedy though as some of his other stuff though i mean he, the character was awkward but it wasn't like napoleon dynamite i would comedy. say his no no it's not it's not cringe comedy <clears throat> you know i was gonna say it's his kind of awkward shy character with um kind of funny circumstance around him okay and, and super <clears throat> this one was more of <clears throat> more of an outgoing character than I've ever seen him in because 
So what do you? He was kind of relatable to most to quite a few people except for his sister and the. So what do you give it? I mean, what's your your final rating? You gonna stick with a three point five? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm leave it there. I mean, like it's not as horrible as most comedies, so it gets a little bit of a bump since it's um, better than quite a few that I've seen in the past twenty so, years. Ryan, what do you give it? Three point five, four? Yeah, no, it's it was it was surprising how much actual soul this movie had to yeah. it. You know, um, it like it actually told a good story. I was expecting just kind of some dumb comedy, you know, <laughs> so, and was. Very pleasantly surprised. I mean, it's it's obviously got its flaws. Um, so the, the, three and a half, but uh, yeah, such a fun movie. So the question on the fact that obviously I'm not a giant fan of comedy, do you guys or think Rainbow I would Wilson? enjoy it? I'm just comedy wise. I mean, I can if I like it at all, I can forgive. I think you would enjoy it if you're watching it with your wife. I have to give that a shot if I can force her to watch a Rain Wilson movie. Well, she likes well, and it's some not, she chick likes, flick comedies. That she, she likes like. comedies more than I do. I mean, yeah, that's but, what I'm saying. So if you're with your wife, then you can actually both enjoy some of the moments instead of you sitting there playing your video game. But in, in all defense, it doesn't take much to be a fan of comedy more than I am. That's kind of what I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, does she love Blazing Saddles? I think so. I. But how do you not know if your wife has seen Blazing Saddles? I'm really tired. I don't know. I know she's seen it. I don't know if she enjoys it as much as I do. I know more guys that love that movie than women. I mean, that's like a fail of growing up not to have seen Blazing Saddles. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, parenting. we do, do have a face. talk with her parents? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we... get them we... on the phone? <laughs> no. Do you have their number? Nope. Oh, good man. Ladies and gentlemen. Are we, we... going to have to have, like, an intervention? <laughs> I think we might. We have to, like, get up and smoke, still smoking next movie, throw some Blazing Saddles, uh, Young Frankenstein. I'm pretty sure she, she doesn't like some of those movies named. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a Facebook yeah. page. Do you love us, hate us? It's facebebook.com slash reviews, And you can also hear us on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, and, and more. We do on Glorious Bastards. And she likes that movie. Right. And I, I picked horrible. season one, episode one of the 1967 version of Dragnet <laughs> for one reason. Um, I have said th throughout the five years we've been doing this how TV shows are a product of their time. In 1967, there were two shows in particular that proved my point. One is Hawaii Five O, which lasted up until the early 80s, which started the same year as this show, which was Dragnet 1967, which didn't go past 1970. Um, this episode was it's the LSD story or something like that. Yeah. Basically, it's the introduction of LSD into Los Angeles during the 60s and the fallout from it. Thank you, and, Timothy Leary. And one of the reasons I, I thought this was hilarious, because if you know anything about drugs, in the beginning episode, you see them handle LSD in sugar cubes. They're yeah. handled. The way I, you'd be tripping, especially if you're sweating at all. Um, I, I love the fact how anti everything this is, and even then, it's still wrong in some of the stuff they give you. <laughs> so there were memes that came out when California was getting on the point of legalizing pot, and there was one in there that said, "Not take, take a uh, marijuana." I never heard that term before <laughs> seeing them in the memes, but that was actually used mm -hmm. in this episode. The guy said, it's not as bad as if my kid's doing heroin or taking a marijuana. And uh, <laughs> I'm just kind of like a little bit like baffled by that. Like, how do you take a marijuana? And then they were saying that they were uh, I'm trying to remember the exact terminology, but it was, it was very awkward of how they were smoking weed. They were saying they were like inhaling weed is how they I think they used the word inhaling instead of smoking or it was very awkward, and then I want to bring up this fact, because they say that the story is true. No one, and I mean no one, ever has died off of taking LSD alone. They have overdosed and fried their brains, but they have not been killed but by you, you noticed alone. You noticed, spoiler alert, but the show's as old as it is. Um what what basically the reason why they they said the guy overdosed was because all the pills he was taking. Well, what, they weren't just pills though; they were pills of LSD. Here it is. Here's the quote I wanted to say. This isn't this quote's not on this episode, but to prove how '60s this is, 
This is from Sergeant Joe Friday. It said, marijuana is the flame, heroin is the fuse, LSD is the bomb. <laughs> and I just, I love this because if, if you look at it during the counterculture, I mean, that was all the stuff that was popular. During the 70s, it grew more popular. Up until the day well, where marijuana is pretty much legal everywhere, minus and, maybe a few places. And it's like well, the baby drug. <laughs> yeah. here, here, here's, the, here's the thing. This is, this is my theory why it was, was 67 to, what, 1970, right? Yeah, that's as far as it went. Yeah, 67, you can probably still consider the whole peace and love and, and a little bit more free expression and free drug use, things like that, as counterculture. By 1969, it, it's inaccurate to call it counterculture anymore. It was culture. It, I also think at that point in time, people became addicted to what they're taking. Towards the towards the seventies, it became more burnouts and, and just druggies instead of people experimenting. From what I've heard and read, uh, I well, uh, basically by the by the time that you get you get your adolescents coming up, starting to watch TV, which is primarily who watches TV. You know, this is like your dad's kind of stuff, and and you didn't want to listen to your dad preach to you about how bad weed is. True. I mean, the, the, see, this is one of the reasons I, I love this. I love Dragnet to begin with, but I love the comparison of this to Hawaii Five-0 because if you watch the original Hawaii Five-0, it was very forward-looking from how they yeah. were dressed to the, the production style to the stories they were telling, whereas this is very – Brian's 100 percent right. This is very – this is your dad's story versus Dragnet uh, – excuse me, Hawaii Five-0 is this is for the youth and you're having fun and, you know – I just love this comparison. Yeah, Hawaii Five O. Hawaii Five O kind of saw where the ball was going. Yeah, these are the, and got underneath it. Yeah, you know? these are the two shows I usually tell people watch just to see because during that time there was this show showed the transition between um, I think target audiences. Because right. this show didn't last past the seventies, they tried rebooting it a couple of times. Really, never survived after Jack Webb. No, I, but I mean there was quite well, a you lot know. Of, uh, your your conservative. The, what was that, Ryan? The uh, the more conservative. I was I was going to say the more conservative crowds. You know, were the ones who kind of watched this stuff. You know, World War Two vets. You know, and things like that. Yeah, right. That's exactly right. This this show is um, hilarious, though. It's 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 entertaining and it's hilarious for multiple reasons. This is one of my favorite episodes, just because how over the top it is. I've known oh, people man. who have done a lot of LSD. I've never seen one of them painted up like that. Oh, Ever. I know. I know. Ever. I mean, just... Unless you're going to a rave and that's something completely different. Yeah, there even the scene where they went to bust up the, the house party. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean... Uh, the dude's eating paint. Yeah, the dude's eating paint. There's some chick, like, trying to <laughs> climb up the wall. There's oh, by another the way, chick, my... like, kind of dancing. Like, you ain't gonna search me, officer. My, my, my favorite part of that whole scene is the joints. And every oh, time yeah. I see that going, those are the thinnest joints ever. Yeah, I mean, that, but that was all the party stuff. There was like four joints and like five supposed, uh, I have never seen acid put in a capsule, just to put that out there. Somebody <laughs> opened the capsule, <laughs> dropped some LSD in it, and then somehow managed, sealed it back up. Somehow managed to keep all in the, the stuff inside 60s. of it. In the 60s. They're not going to take that much time. When they, even when they say, okay, I'm getting on tangent here. <laughs> it's they so, said that they put it on yeah. the back of stamps and had people licking the stamps. That, that's how you yeah, do that's, LSD. Yeah, that's wow. <laughs> you put it on a piece of yeah, paper. Either that, welcome I to, was going to say, yeah, get some wax paper and an eyedropper. Welcome, welcome to This Week in Drugs. <laughs> yeah, I, I just go off on this entire episode. I just, that's that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's the that, reason why I picked it, just because know, this is I this know. is the perfect episode to well, talk about Well, you know what? Hold on a second. This is this is exactly why, like, the D.A.R.E. program was bullshit. I was <laughs> okay? Because they they would tell you, oh, these things are the worst things ever. Era. You yeah. know, the weed is going to lead you to being a junkie on the street. And then you smoke pot when you're a teenager. And you're like, you lying sons of bitches. The, fun, <laughs> the funniest part about the D.A.R.E. program from the people I used to hang out with, I know people that started doing drugs because of D.A.R.E. more than they have ever known anybody who didn't oh, do yeah. it. Did you ever well, know about T.I.P.? Well, that's, that's hold on, hold on. This well, is, I, oh, I want to see where I, oh. I haven't, but All we're right. going to continue this conversation off the air. Oh, come on! We this might, is why we want to do it. <laughs> we, we might talk about this a little later. Um, and a little interesting news because I wonder why Jamie Lee Curtis to return for the new Halloween movie. 
If if this is true, she, mean, that character damn. has the She's worst the possible scream queen. Well, she has that character has the worst possible luck if you're getting chased by that guy nonstop your entire life. Yeah. Okay, see when you say no, chase, see, this that is, means this he's is, running. No, this he is, is silly. following at a distance. No, he's stalking her. Really, he's walking. This is her. this is this is very silly. If, if if this is true, this movie realistically would be ten minutes long. It would be Michael Myers getting to wherever Jamie Lee Curtis is and the Claymore going off in his face because there's no way she's not that paranoid. Right? At, at this point, yeah. she's a master of, uh, you know, basically she's Steven Seagal with boobs. Oh, I'm going to say this. She's the, she's the fucking, she is the Viet Cong, I guarantee <laughs> it, with, with spike there's... traps in front of her front door and shit. Um, That's why I laughed. I had to share this because it made Rob me laugh. If Zombie's the director, I'll watch it. Oh, just because Rob. I gotta say. So, in in some in another piece of news, I actually had Jamie Lee Curtis was in the movie. True Lies TV adaption is in the works. Now, this is something I've heard off and on for quite a while. Is the um, oh, this is this makes Arnold, me so sad. Is the um, Arnold a star? I probably not. Um, honestly, this is this is gonna be a network TV like the fucking Lethal Weapon series that's out right now. Uh, I, I, mean, I refuse. Like, uh, I, I what, refuse to watch that because I'm. I. I. I just. But Stephen King with, did with the shinning. You want to get sued, boy? Right. I knew one of you guys was gonna say it. Um, it wasn't gonna be Ryan. He screwed it last time. Because when I mean when. Well, Stephen no, I King wasn't. I wasn't his, gonna say it because he didn't say the shining. Well, yeah, true. See, he's got it. Um, <laughs> that, but, that that was that was your cue to say Shh, you want to get sued. Um, anyways, but I mean, when Stephen King threw his hissy fit and made the the remake made for TV Hallmark Channel, The Shining, <laughs> um, that that was like that's what I see happening with the True Lies and what did you say the other one was, Ryan? I'm lethal, trying to think. We- lethal, lethal weapon. weapon. That's the one I was thinking of. Some yeah. reason I had Die Hard. Well, it, because they're they're gonna strip away everything that made that movie awesome. Exactly. I don't think they could make. So this is my honest opinion. Certain movies are really products of their time. That movie was the perfect product of the time because of the actors. You've got Tom Arnold, who I generally yeah. don't like, but he was great in this movie. This yeah. was the movie that actually started me oh, looking at Tom, Tom that made me start looking at Tom Arnold again instead of really thinking the dude is just a putz. You've got Jamie Lee Curtis, you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um he you did cannot a re- Jet Lee's that were fun. You cannot reproduce this movie without the original actors and have it any good is because the chemistry between everybody was so well. They just worked as gr- worked great. Bert yeah, Bert that Bert that Bert. movie and and the same thing the same thing with Lethal Weapon, those movies are the characters. Oh yeah. You know? Like you can have other people call themselves, you know, Martin Riggs and and uh uh Murtaugh, but it's not Danny Glover and, and Mel Gibson. It's not Tom Arnold and and Schwarzenegger, you know, I would specifically say on Lethal Weapon would be hard a because I'm a big fan of the original. Is that had such a high mark and such a those two out of any actors I've seen had amazing chemistry together. Yeah, um, I just yeah, I, I just I just I wish they would stop. I mean, this is basically a cash grab. I would you know, say, go for a couple of seasons and I'd say Mel Gibson and um, Danny Glover had a way better chemistry than. Um, <clears throat> Oh my God! Tom Arnold? Uh, no, not Tom Arnold and Arnold. I was going to bring up the the Samuel Jackson and Mel Gibson. I I enjoyed the ones with Bruce Willis a lot more than I did the other one. Yeah, you know. Um, we do have a death that I That's just true. heard about. Harry Dean Stanton um, died just oh yeah a couple like last week sometime. Um, I guarantee you know who he is. Look him up. He's very. He's been in a lot of movies, and he has extremely distinct look. Um, I was really bummed by this. Yeah, that dude. That dude was awesome. He he was in a ton of shit. Yeah, and he just had an amazing look. Um, I was really well. He, I mean, he he played very weird characters, very awesome characters. I mean, people probably remember most from Alien. Yeah, Um, that's what I was thinking. But oh, dude, I love this guy. So I was bummed. Yeah, he he was he was pretty old. How how he was like in his in his nineties or something, yeah, he, though, wasn't it? He, yeah, he had a really good run. Nineties is a good age to you know to kind of move on, as it were. Yeah, that's that's definitely a win. 
And in remaking uh, tele- uh, movies into television, one that might actually work, L.A. Confidential is the latest movie to get a TV ad- adaptation. This is the only one out of any of the ones we talked about today that I actually think may have a shot. If you've never seen L.A. Confidential, you've got to see it. It has one of the best casts in the history of movies. But I think the time is the reason why it would be so good versus the story. Well, you got Law and Order yeah, it's... Petering, petering out. Uh, Blue Bloods just finished, what, two, three years ago? Yeah. But this, is, so. this, is, this would be a period piece. I don't remember the time. I think it was in the 40s. Oh, the first one. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. classic, oh, classic yeah. noir kind of kind of stuff. You know, if, like the the when when the the, the the valley was absolutely nothing. And and Hollywood, yeah, the was, only thing that was out there was like one movie studio. And oh, Hollywood you mean back was, when Hollywood ha- got snow. You know, when when Hollywood was Hollywood. Now this is according to this. This is CBS is talking to to bring the series. Um, I actually, CBS? I actually think this could be a major hit but just because yeah the, this the 40s has some potential 30s. yeah i think but do it you think has it's the time period because it's a I, it is the time period but that's why the, the the first movie worked i mean yeah it was an amazing ensemble cast but it doesn't it doesn't matter those were were you know like just the archetypes for for those characters and it was just people you recognize you can definitely recreate that i really hope um danny devito's in this because I would love to see Danny DeVito be the one person who, who, from the movie comes in this, just because I think it'd be awesome. Danny DeVito's pretty old now. Was he like almost eighty? Yeah, he's. But I, he's, he's now. He's not that he's old. Sixties at least. No, he's got to be pretty old now. Oh, he's. Uh, I, but he he's might even be seventy. He, he looks really good in Sunny. Was it uh, Sunny in Philadelphia? Oh yeah. Um. Wow, never, never thought I'd hear anybody say Danny DeVito looks good in that show. Looks good at any point. Well, considering how, considering, I, I mean, how, he he looks like a caveman in that show. Well, yeah, I mean, he does kind of look like the troll from the story Three Billy Goats Gruff, but so seventy two. He looks really good for seventy two. Still looks like a troll. You want his number? Jeff Bridges wants Starman two to happen, and the rest of the world went. What Why? movie? What? Yeah, I mean, I, I, the three of us might have been the only people who have seen Starman out of everybody I know. I'm just like, <laughs> who's calling for this? <laughs> I, I mean, Apparently, who's writing yeah. you and saying uh, yeah. you want Starman. I think he's Two. the one who's calling for it. Um, I I couldn't tell you. I don't understand it, but I do think it's hilarious. A movie that people didn't watch in the '80s, at least if I remember correctly. Because I saw it in the 90s, and everybody I ask about it goes, was go, like huh? at the Dollar Theater when it came out. <laughs> so what, what do you think, Ryan? Are you, are you calling for a Starman 2? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You might even have to scratch me off the people you know who've seen that. I've never seen the original Starman. Wow. So have James, have you seen it? So, okay, so two out of three. This is how fucking obscure that movie I'm is. I'm just actually wondering if there was anybody else besides him in there that actually did anything with their lives. <laughs> I'm just seriously asking. I mean, I'm looking at the is cast. That, like, that's uh, what's her name from Indiana Jones. Isn't yeah, it? but yeah. really, what has she done in the past twenty years? She years? hasn't. Well, she hasn't career-wise. She hasn't done much. She's probably done. Well, wait. Did, can, is she still alive? Yeah, she's yeah, still alive. She's still alive. Alive. Yeah, yeah. She's sixty-five. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to let you know that next week's movie is to be announced. I thought we were doing Dunkirk. Are we, Are we doing Dunkirk? I thought we were. Ryan? Dunkirk? I'm down. Okay, we're next week we're doing Dunkirk. Um, we just kind of started the show. Usually there's a little talk. James and Ryan both gave The Rocker a 3.5. I'll give, give it, if I actually get a chance to see it at some point in time, I'll let you know. He Chances gives it are I won't. So, ladies and gentlemen, for Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and Ryan Preston, thank you for listening. Goodbye.